irony upon irony upon irony. In many ways, that's the story of the book of Esther. We already have two ironies sitting out there unresolved. First is the use of casting lots, or poor, by the evil Haman to determine the date when he will order the murder of all the Jews in the Persian Empire. That irony won't be fully resolved until the very end of the book. And the second irony is Haman's construct, construction of a comically huge set of gallows to hang Mordecai. We'll see the resolution of that ironic turn on Monday. Today we see an irony both introduced and resolved within one scene, and it is the turning point of the entire book of Esther. Hello, I'm Stuart Baskin, pastor of First Presbyterian Church of Tyler, Texas, and this is your daily devotional for Saturday, September 24th, 2022. The scene opens late one night in the king's bedchamber. On this night, the king seems to be suffering from a bit of insomnia. We don't know if he counted sheep to try to get back to sleep, but we do find out that he does something that is at once ordinary and yet at the same time something only a king would do. He orders the official records of his actions, called the annals, brought to him for his servants to read to him. Who knows? Maybe he was hoping the annals would be boring enough to put him back to sleep. But in the portion his servants read to him, the annals recall what Mordecai had done in uncovering a plot to assassinate Ahasuerus himself. That got Ahasuerus wondering, had Mordecai been honored for his service? His servants answer him, nothing has been done for him. It is just at that moment that Haman comes into the king's chamber. Why he would come in at such an hour, who knows? Maybe the reading from the annals has taken most of the night and it is now morning. Or perhaps Haman is so anxious to get on with Mordecai's execution that he get, just can't wait. In any event, here's what happens next. Now Haman had just entered the outer court of the king's palace to speak to the king about having Mordecai hanged on the gallows that he had prepared for him. So the king's servants told him, Haman is there standing in the court. The king said, let him come in. Now, before Haman can speak, the king asks him a question. So Haman came in, and the king said to him, what shall be done for the man whom the king wishes to honor? Haman said to himself, whom would the king wish to honor more than me? So Haman said to the king, for the man whom the king wishes to honor, let royal robes be brought, which the king has worn and a horse that the king has ridden, with a royal crown on its head. Let the robes and the horse be handed over to one of the king's most noble officials. Let him robe the man whom the king wishes to honor, and let him conduct the man on horseback through the open square of the city, proclaiming before him, Thus it shall be done for the man whom the king wishes to honor. As you can tell, Haman's ego is on full display here. He believes the king plans to honor him. So naturally, he plays up what the king should do to honor someone. We already know that the king will follow Haman's advice on things, so Haman knows that whatever he suggests, the king will do. Naturally, he makes the show of honoring someone grandiose, as grandiose as his fragile ego. Now the full irony of the scene comes into view. The writer says, Then the king said to Haman, Quickly, take the robes and the horse, as you have said, and do so to the Jew Mordecai, who sits at the king's gate. Leave out nothing that you have mentioned. So Haman took the robes and the horse and robed Mordecai and led him riding through the open square of the city, proclaiming, Thus shall it be done for the man whom the king wishes to honor. The irony is that what Haman had intended for himself, he now must bestow on his bitterest enemy, Mordecai. The very man who refused to honor Haman, now Haman must honor at the king's command. And we, the readers, we get a laugh at Haman's expense. When we return on Monday, 
another irony resolved. But for now, may God continue to bless you and keep you in all that you do this day and in all the days ahead.